Welcome to my presentation on the Baltic Sea microplastics. My name is Gerard Czarnewski. I'm head of the Coastal and Marine Management Group at the Leibniz Institute for Baltic Sea Research in Warnemünde, Germany. At the same time, I'm professor at Klaipeda University. A first overview. I will give you some background about the state of art with respect to plastic and then focus on microplastic, the special challenges, the behavior in the sea, and some measures how to reduce the plastic emissions. And I finish with conclusions. Plastics in the sea is found everywhere. European examples shown here on the photos. It is a global problem. It covers a wide spectrum of plastic types, shapes and size classes. And usually it ends up at the coast. Background for all plastic research is very much the EU Marine Strategy Framework Directive, because it defined plastics as a descriptor for a good status. And therefore we had to have a look what is, are the pollution sources? What is the state? What is the consequences? So we need to know what are the trends of litter washed ashore and what is the situation with respect to microplastics. And on the Baltic Sea level, this directive is implemented by HELCOM, by the Helsinki Commission. Definitions. Plastic is separated into three classes. Microplastic is everything under five millimeters. So relatively large items are considered as microplastic. We have mesoplastic and above 2.5 centimeters, macroplastic. And I first give you an overview about the state of art with respect to macro plastic to show you why we have to focus on microplastics. So in general, 80% of the litter we find on beaches in the sea are plastics. And local emissions, especially in the Baltic, are dominating coastal cities, seaside resorts, tourism hotspots, and events like Hansesee. Plastic emissions from ships to the open sea end up at the coasts relatively fast, within days. If plastic stays for, let's say, weeks and is overgrown with organic material, biofouling, it changes buoyancy and can sink to the bottom and even floating material can be deposited at the sea bottom. The Marco litter concentrations at beaches are extremely variable in time and space. But we can say that the pollution state of the Baltic Sea is low compared to other seas, compared to the Atlantic or the Mediterranean uh, Sea. So what are the lessons we learned from our monitoring? So, very likely, these low emissions, relatively low emissions of only 100 items per 100 meter of beach are a result of the closed character of the sea, no long distance transport, of uh, fisheries, fisheries is not that intensive compared to the Atlantic or the North Sea, and beach cleaning takes place. So this means the 100 meter method is because of these cleanings, not that suitable for Baltic Sea beaches. And the second aspect is that we do not have so many beaches that are remote and do not underlie cleaning are not utilized by tourists. So altogether, Marco litter is a poor indicator for the pollution of the Baltic Sea. The new 
methods focusing on mesolitter overcome some of the weaknesses. But we have to have a look on microplastics. So with research on microplastics, some data exists for concentrations in the sea, on beaches, in the sediment. But the observed concentrations very much depend on the applied uh, sampling methods, how the samples were prepared, and uh, on the analytical uh, methods. And the costs of analyzing microplastics in the lab are extremely high. So this limits our possibility to gain uh, knowledge. And as a consequence, this data is very rare. It varies within wide ranges, shows extreme spatial and temporal variability, and can hardly be regarded as reliable. So the first question was then, could Marco or mesoplastic items serve as indicator at least for microplastics? We tried out several methods in the Baltic Sea, but to make a long story short, no, they cannot. Because microplastic and meso- and macroplastic have different sources and different pathways. However, since the sampling of mesolitter, especially, is relatively cheap. While microplastic is expensive, it can help us to get an idea about the spatio-temporal variability and pattern at coasts and in the sea. So microplastic is a major challenge. So the questions are, how can we get an insight into the required state of the microplastic pollution in the Baltic Sea, the spatial and temporal uh, concentration pattern, as well as the transport in the marine environment. What we know is that more than 80% of plastics, microplastics, enters from urban sources and usually water-bound, with wastewater mainly, or uh, storm runoff. So, and these are th th synthetic uh, textiles, rubber from tires, city dust, plastic granules. So, knowing that water-bound emissions are dominating, we can focus on those and on urban, urban sources. So what we did was we compiled data on all wastewater uh, treatment plants in the Baltic Sea region, on the amounts of water they clean and the cleaning technique. We calculated annual emissions from these areas, calculated then how much enters with these rivers into the Baltic Sea and carried out model simulations how this microplastics behaves in the Baltic Sea. And later we compared it, uh, the data then, with field studies. So this is the first step. It shows the Baltic Sea, the Baltic Sea catchment, the river basin, gray, and the black dots are the over 3,000 wastewater treatment plants. And we see that from those, we have an annual emission of 67 trillion microplastic particles in the size fraction between 20 and 500 micrometer, so large amounts. And the large rivers are most important in this respect. For example, the Vistula alone contributes 6% of all the emissions to the sea. So this data was used as input for 
the model, but first it had to be accumulated and we had to calculate how much is emitted at the coast sea interface. And the concentrations, the amounts, are indicated here in this figure. So these red circles, which we find in, for example, uh, St. Petersburg, or Oda or Nemunas, alone mean five trillion particles entering per year. But we have all around the Baltic Sea smaller emissions. So large rivers and coastal cities are major emission pathways. The problem is that the retention of plastics in rivers during the transport is not known and uh, has to be omitted. So everything that is emitted in the river basin is assumed to enter the sea. In the following you will see a movie what happens to this microplastic in the sea. The plumes indicate the microplastic concentrations. The darker they get, the higher the concentrations. And the boxes at the coasts are the amounts that are accumulated at beaches. And the simulation will run over one year. You see the emission from large rivers, how the particles spread far into the uh, Baltic Sea. And you see that the squares at the coast get dark. So a lot is accumulated at the coast. And even remote parts of the Baltic Sea are already after a year of emissions affected by microplastic. So there are no microplastic free areas in the Baltic Sea anymore. So what did we learn from it? The picture on the right hand side shows you the average concentrations near the sea surface. And the average concentration in the central Baltic Sea is around one particle per uh, cubic meter of water. This sounds very low compared to the extremely high emissions. So how does it come that these concentrations are relatively low, that we do not see, obviously, a long-term accumulation of plastics in the sea. First of all, we have to state that the concentrations show an extremely strong spatial variability, strong gradients. Depending on the wind, the concentrations at a spot can be high or low. So it does not make sense to sample microplastic in the sea, or you have to do it very often to get reliable results. And the picture you saw with respect to, to the microplastic concentration in the sea very much reminds of the picture of the Baltic Sea Pressure Index, showing the pressure of all human activities. We can, when we compare this pattern, say, where there is a lot of human activity, a lot of human pressures, there is a lot of microplastics. Let's now go a bit into detail. The vertical distribution in different river basins. Arkona Sea, Gulf of Gansk, Gulf of Finland, Gotland Basin. This figure indicates that nearly no plastic is transported into deeper areas of the Baltic Sea. Everything remains on the surface. And this is true for all kinds of microplastics, floating and sinking. Usually, plastic has a density between 0.9 to 1.4 
grams per cubic centimeters. Water has a density of about one. But no thinking takes place. And what we learn from the model simulations is that taking into account our spatial temporal resolution of the model, difference in shape and size do not play an important role. But biofilms may play a role. As soon as plastic is overgrown, the floating ability changes. So how does it come? It, is, it stays at the surface and the concentrations are low. And one explanation is that the residence time is relatively low. The picture on the left-hand side shows this for polyethylene and polypropylene. And on the right-hand side for PET, so most common plastics. And what is common to both is that the residence time, the time microplastic stays in the Baltic Sea, is with 14 days relatively short, independently whether it's floating or sinking. So where does it end up? Does it end up in the sediments? These pictures show the concentrations at the sediments. And in average over the year, you see in coastal sediments some deposition of plastic. Not much in the central Baltic Sea. But as soon as you have a look at the concentrations, they are low. They are below one particle per square meter of the sediment. So microplastics on the sediment surface is usually low. No permanent accumulation takes place on these sandy nearshore uh, sediments because these areas are affected by storms. Storms cause turbulence, a resuspension of uh, plastics and is transporting everything towards the coast. So we have to have a look for beaches. Beaches seem to be the major sink. And this is true if you have a look at this picture. The colors in orange, which are common around the coast, indicate that 800 million particles, microplastic particles, are accumulating per meter and year of the coast. So extremely high amounts. So coasts are major sinks for microplastic. And the accumulation is usually highest near the emission uh, point. So as a consequence, the monitoring should take place in the surrounding of the river mouth to get highest concentrations. What can we do against microplastics? First idea, of course, is to improve sewage treatment. If we have a look, if all sewage treatment plants in the Baltic Sea region would be connected to a basic treatment and even a simple water, uh, wastewater treatment plant removes 85% of plastics, we would get a reduction of the loads by about 10%. If we have really highest class wastewater treatment plants with a sand filtration, 97% would be removed. But it means that the load reduction would be only a bit above 20% because treated wastewater is not the major concern. So wastewater treatment plants are efficient traps for microplastics. And improving wastewater treatment beyond the third step and P removal would be extremely expensive and with respect to plastics, not efficient. We need to focus on stormwater 
and wastewater overflows, depending on which system cities have. Stormwater means rainwater is entering the sea from cities without any treatment. Overflows happen when storm and heavy rains enter the sewage channels and exceed the capacity of um, the plants. So everything has to be released without treatment. And this non-treated water contributes about 60% to the total emissions. We assume that presently the amount of overflow is 1.5%. If this could be reduced to, let's say, 0.3% by measures, by retention basins or um, a wide spectrum of uh, measures, the load could be reduced by 50%. So, in the Baltic, stormwater and sewer overflow seems to be the major microplastic pathways. So we should focus measures on separated uh, sewer systems and stormwater retention systems. To conclude, so mitigation and load reduction measures should address stormwater and sewer overflow, especially in urban areas. We urgently need further research on the retention of microplastics in rivers during the transport from the emission spot in the river basin to the sea. And the monitoring should preferably take place at the coast, at beaches, because beaches are very likely the major sink and especially in the surrounding of large rivers. Already in the introduction slide, you saw this picture. This shows Alexandria in uh, Egypt, and it gives an idea that compared to the problems we have with meso, macro, and microplastics, in other parts of the world, the problems are by an order of magnitude higher. And with this, I like to thank you for your attention.